90 miles north in Stark, New Hampshire, Conservation Officer Jim Sears patrols South Pond. How you doing? Good. Catch anything? We oh. just got here. What kind of excuse is that? <laughs> oh, I want to be a fishing game officer when I grow up. You do? How old are you? Eight. Nice. You got 13 years. Yeah. You can apply. Yeah. Cool, man. Keep fishing, hunting, learn how to trap, get out in the woods. <laughs> cool. Have you guys been up here much this season, or is this your first time to south? Second time. Second time. Oh, really? Any luck up here at all? Have you got anything? Or? No, not when we came here, no. No. It's good meeting you, buddy. I hope I get to work with you. It's going to be a ways away. Yeah. yeah. Keep your nose clean and work hard. Yeah. See you guys. I will. I'm going to call probably Glenn or Dispatch, because I got a message that there's a brainworm moose up in Nashreen Bog, the near a bunch of the camps are there. Brainworm, what it is, is a parasite that will get into the uh, moose's system. It'll be picked up in something that they eat, and then the way that parasite operates, it moves into the brain, and it's not pretty, but it lives off the moose's brain until it eventually kills the moose. Yo, Sergeant Lucas. What are you going on? Oh, not much. Just um, finishing up on South Pond. I just checked a bunch of fishermen. And... Did you get my message about the moose, Jim? I got it from dispatch. Just don't, don't go in there assuming that it's brainworm. The last two moose I responded to were thin and skinny, and they look ragged, but they definitely did not have any signs. OK. If it does, then obviously you don't put it down. But you don't see the signs, I wouldn't even. Yeah, I'll leave. I'll leave it go. All right, if you need anything, we're covering a crash at Stewartstown right now. Get your bike. Mike. So uh, we're going to go check it out. And if it truly does have brain worm, then unfortunately, there's no recovery for that animal. So we're going to have to put it down. See what happens. This is where the moose report was. I don't really have any kind of good details on where the moose is exactly. There's no snowmobiles here, but you can tell someone was here. How's it going? I guess you got our message. Yes. I see some snowmobiles pull up. Lo and behold, it's the camp owners themselves. I kind of just look out into the bog, and it's clear as day. Uh, cow moose standing out in the middle of the bog. I'm just by its lonesome. I've been for three days. OK. Did you see him walking in circles or anything like that? All day yesterday. OK. He's, he's kind of hanging his head, and his ears are going different directions. OK. So. Pretty indicative. Yeah. So. yeah. Telltale signs of brain worm are going to be usually their heads kind of tilted to the side, the ears sort of dipped off a little bit, and um, they end up walking in circles a lot, very concentric circles when they're trying to walk away from you. I'm going to get a little bit closer, but if I don't have to, I won't put it down, but it sounds like that might be where it's going to go. I got snowshoes in here. All right, I'll throw the snowshoes on. It's better than fighting it and struggling down through. Snowshoes are an invaluable tool in the wintertime. Anything that's off trail or off like a beaten down, groomed way, you're going to be post holing, which is pretty much going right through until you stop. And it's quite a battle. We were yelling at one snow machine for going out towards it. Yeah, because in reality, I mean, even if it is sick, it's harassing it. So. Yeah, right. Exactly. I was expecting to see it at least lay down or something. Uh -huh. It hasn't even laid down in three days. So three whole days it's been there, huh? Yeah. You've been there for a long time. Thanks for me bought us snow shoes, and we'll see how it goes. This is where it's tough, because from a distance right here, he doesn't look that bad. As I'm approaching this moose, she's very attentive. Her ears are coming up. She can tell that I'm coming towards her, that I'm moving. 
she seems with it. And she started to walk away from me in a straight line. The alertness that she has and kind of her sort of demeanor on my approach and how close I could get to her is eliminating the possibility of brain worm. Doesn't look much different than what you'd expect a moose to look like this time of year. If you look at it right now, I mean, look how much she's, she's struggling. So this kind of issue of post-holing without having snowshoes, this is exactly what the moose is dealing with. This is very exhausting. So it's something that they're adapted to deal with, but they're pretty worn out by the end of the winter. She's eating right now, so she's getting food. She looks reasonably healthy. I'm going to leave her alone. She has a chance to survive this winter, which we want to give her that chance. We don't want people to keep stressing her out. That's just going to wear down her fat stores. Any animal that lives in cold temperatures, they rely on fat and, and energy stores that they build up during the fall and late summer months. So the majority of their energy expenditure is drawn from those fat storages. They will get some energy from what they're eating, but you start pushing them around, there's only so much food in the woods, and it's definitely a limited amount of body fat. It's not gonna help them. The problem is that she's near these camps and people are gonna keep wanting to go out and look at her. People sometimes tend to just love things to death, and we don't want that to get to that point. So we'll leave it be, and um, I'll let the biologist know about it come Monday. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave her be. If they do have it, they don't like walk in a straight line like that. It's a long winter, they're tired. That's why I didn't want to keep pursuing her because now it's just burning up her energy and stressing her out. I can tell it's not coming from their camp, but the biggest concern is harassment of this moose. It's not gonna help her in the long run. The moose is the number one thing, but the other thing too is they can't be in there with their snowmobiles. I know there's off-trail riding going on around the county and some landowners don't really care, but this is state property and we're not having it. It can cause many problems, everything from damage of trees um, all the way up to if they go too far and they get stuck, it could become a search and rescue operation. Uh, there's a whole plethora of problems, so I want to put an end to that. Yeah, thanks again. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't want to just hang out here. Have a good one? Yes, you too. Yeah, drive safe. <laughs>